Hey there guys, we're going to be going back to the current Clash of Wills for another clear. This clear is going to be very similar to the five turn clear that I posted previously, but I've gotten quite a few comments saying, show me a clear with Zyrus, show me a clear with Lastwell, with New Rain as the leader. These are all units I do not own. So once again, I called in a very good friend, Barry, and he's going to be doing the clear while I explain it, etc. So Barry, you can introduce yourself and you know, we are very thankful that you've got all EX3s here. You know, what can I say? Um, there's no secret Ong's my favorite unit. I figured you might as well pull the relevant cast so that he can at least be somewhat relevant. Although this uh, this feels like trying to jam a square peg into a round hole. So here we are. Yeah, we tried to do like a turn three clear. Um, the issue was filling the morale gauge with too many JP units on the party. We tried doing a turn four clear. The issue was to do that, you've got to have multiple focus plus units. Those are all JP units. They're all terrible. Um, so we kind of landed right back on turn five. Uh, but we're going to do a higher number than I did because we are using some bigger DS units. So I guess let's go ahead and get in here, Barry. And again, this is this is mostly intended as like a show off. It's relatively hard to do and it probably won't even work if you're not fully EX18 because morale is very tricky with this party. And as you're going to see, we're going to barely get the morale even with starting at 105%. From EX18. So uh, Lastwell is sleeping on the ambush, you know, to, in order to make gearing better because terrible JP units. Um, but all right, Barry, let's wake him up with Melissa using Shelga, Shared Immunity, and Chronic. It's going to be for the morale gain, the immunity buffs, and some mitigation. So Chronic Flow and uh, Shelga. Now we're going to use Esper of Destruction Rain to imbue the party with N. Wartiga. He's going to be our breaker with True Undermine. And then we're going to use a small aquatic mitigation with everyone don't hold something or other. There it is. All right, so Lastwell, Esper of Destruction, is now going to give us Needles on turn one for the Mirage. This does hurt his gearing to get a Needles equipped, but uh, it's got to be done to survive turn one. Aang is going to do... Uh, Placid Concentration, Clear Sun, and Impaling Arrows. This is for uh, the morale gain is pretty much the main reason for that. Chow is going to just quadcast stream to fill the morale gauge. The uh, Netherworld stream. And then Zyrus is going to, as I said in my preview video, use all those morale skills. So we're going to Hydromancy... Uh, Water Veil Ritual, Dragon's Bane Ritual, and then From Blood to Power. And that'll fill a chunk of morale, but as you can see here, it is still very far from 175%. So that is what killed our dreams of doing a turn uh, a turn 3 clear. <laughs> if we could have filled the morale gauge to 175, it would have been a turn 3 clear. It would have been fine. It was so sad. <laughs> Okay, so for this one, we're now going to have Aang do Cleansing Arrow and then double Bolting Strike. I think it's called Shining Arrow or something, or Swift Arrow. It's going to fill the morale gauge. Chow is going to just repeat and do, or reload and do um, Netherworld Stream four times again to fill the morale gauge. Lastwell, on this turn, we're going to use the High Stellastite Rod, or um, Necklace, give him a modifier buff for slightly more damage. The Gilded Pendant. Um, Rain, Esper of Destruction, can just triple cast True Undermine. Uh, let's see. Zyrus is now going to triple or quad cast Absolute Mirror four times for the morale gain. And Melissa will do All Consuming, Minutes of Might, and a Killer Buff. And we're going to hope that we're at 175%. Oh, we're good. We're, we're good. All is good. Okay, perfect. 177. As you can see, that is barely enough of this party. But um, it just got there. But if you're like EX17 or something, 
then you, of course, would be 15% lower starting morale, so you'd be way far off. So this is mostly just a show-off clear. I don't expect most people to copy this clear, because it's, it's pretty hard to copy. It, it, yeah, we were talking about this. Um, it's, it's really what happens when you try to use JP units to clear global content that are specifically keyed for this. It just it doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm, exactly. And now, also, just for people that, you know, you really wanted to copy this clear, you could, and just, like, extend it to turn six, it'd still be completely fine. But for a turn five, um, you, you got to have that morale. But okay, so now we're going to use Melissa to SLB targeting herself, so that on turn five she can do seconds of support. Um, Aang is going to do uh, Roiling Mist, Morning Dew, and Hunter of the Mystical. So that's going to be... What was the first one? Um, Hunter of the Mystical at the very top. Right there. Hunter. Roiling Mist at the field. And then... Um, Morning Dew. Uh, Morning Dew. Yeah, that's just uh, yeah. in peril, basically. Because we don't have a good in peril here. That is one thing this team does, couldn't really fit, is a in peril field. We tried Metsy, We tried Kaito. The morale just wasn't there. So we had to bring Chow in for that extra morale gain. Um, speaking of Chow, he is now going to do the Ramping Amplify. He is going to do Arcane Supplementation. Uh, Bar Warderja. And then Netherworld Stream again. Okay. So, uh, Zyrus on this turn can do triple Absolute Mirror. And then we're going to use another stack of um, the, uh, the Magnus at the top. I forget the name. So, triple Absolute. And then at the top, you should have one more stack of Dragon's Bane Ritual. Yeah, go ahead and do that. Okay. Uh, and then both these JP units are going to use Focus Plus. So with two Focus Plus units, that means we can Vertex next turn. So Focus Energy Plus on both of these. That'll be 3,000 apiece. Next turn will be 12,000, which is, you know, more than the 10 we need. Okay, so the boss is um, imbued with darkness. You know, we're basically immune to pretty much everything. Okay. Some more attacks. Of course, the boss is doing uh, his auto-casting, which is... You know, even worse than player auto casting. <laughs> you'd really think yeah, they'd, they you'd really hope they'd like fix a way to do that, but uh, or fix the auto casting, but they haven't yet. Okay, so it is time to get ready to kill. So for this, we're going to use Zyrus. Just, for, just for fun, that's what an, an NV plus with arcane supplementations magic looks like. Before using. Um, his focus. Also, he's using Celestite Rod, not the Dark Visions Rod, which is a big loss. Um, so Zyrus is now going to do Blood Rite that's going to uh, activate Vertex Mode, uh, surpassing something limits for the, the LB buff, um, Aquatic Killer, and Overhydrate. <coughs> okay. Uh, Rain is going to 150 Amplify, Raging Nebula, and then a, a uh, SR attack. Stardust Ray. Uh, the, yep, that one right there. Uh, Aang is going to do Bolting Strike, Poised Concentration, and Awaken Divinity. Let's see. Laswell is going to do Surpassing Limits. Fighter of Water or something, and then just a Stardust Ray attack. Yeah, we're intentionally not using the perfect dispels because we don't want to lose the boss's um, mitigate or imbue. So one of the Stardust Rays, those do not dispel. Chow is going to do Malediction, Fluffy Watchdog, and then two more cast of anything. Curaja, uh, Netherworld Stream, it doesn't really matter. And then Melissa is going to do Dragon Killer on Lastwell, Beast Killer on Lastwell, and Shared Immunity for the uh, morale gain and immunities, all that fun stuff. Okay, so we're going to be killing next turn, and we're going to be trying to do a flashy number, but 
Because we couldn't really fit in an imperil field or a strong imperil unit, um, the damage won't be as good as it could have been. But okay, so before we start, we're going to use Melissa to do Beast Killer on Zyrus. We're going to do Dragon Killer on... Zyrus doesn't actually need it, so let's do that on Aang. And then Seconds of Support on Zyrus. And okay, the rest of the party is going to SLB. So Aang and Chow will chain together, and then the other three will chain Absolute Mirror. We're looking for a 131 chain as the perfect. Let's see what we do. And we're going to hope for a you know fun variant roll that we can look flashy with like 30 billion or better. The test run did 27, but we'll see how we do here. Hoping for the best. Well, that was better than last time by a lot. Got that perfect score. Perfect chain. 31.1. That's that's a... So it was all variants, Barry. <laughs> that was the problem last yeah, time. Nothing. Jeez. Everyone rolled low. All right. So let's see the damage breakdown. We've got Blood Maid Zyrus doing 12.2. As you can expect, an EX3 Global Unit Neo Plus in Clash Wills is going to do a lot of damage not to mention he got all the killers and he got the only aqua killer in the entire party because it's self only um last well eight you know not bad he's not a clash unit he has no clash scaling not that good and then of course the old meta of units doing you know three four and three uh but again this is still dramatic overkill because you only need five billion and like our worst damage dealer did more than half of that by himself. Our best damage dealer did two and a half times more than you need by himself. So, I don't know. Seems silly to me. What do you think, Barry? Is this is this good for the game, it being tuned so face roll, or is this bad for the game? Like, depends who you ask. People will say, oh, this is great, I get a free win. Other people will say, it's boring, what's the point? I'm just curious what your thoughts are. So, I I really like to be strong. Um, I like to do big damage numbers. I like all of these things. Um, it kind of feels like we're past the point of necessity, though. I mean, I this is supposed to be the third clash in the quarter, which means this was theoretically supposed to be the hardest clash. It's not. Um, they released a new meta right before it, which just completely trivialized all of this. And then I guess... The, the unsaid part to all of this is, of course, this this was our content for potentially the next two weeks. And we're clearing it so substantively that, I mean, <laughs> why why does it have to be this way? Like, couldn't we have gotten something else to do? Yeah. Or made it harder? Like, the third one is supposed to be? I don't know. I just... Mm -hmm. I, I agree entirely. I don't know. So here is... Um... You know, the other side of the coin. Do you think it would have been better or worse for them to tune it with the assumption of Neo Plus numbers? Because that would mean, let's assume they adjusted the stats, and in order to deal 5 billion, you would have to have something like Zyrus, maybe even Lastwell, at the same time on the party. Um, then all of a sudden, anyone that didn't pull both Lastwell and Zyrus, to EX2 at the minimum, uh, that would be locked out of it. Would that have been better or worse? Because, I mean... Oh, no. No, he, no, no, no. Yeah, because here's the I thing. Mean, so so what, um, what I want when I want more challenging, I do want it bulkier than it is, but I don't yes. want it specifically locked to the latest Neo Pluses. I want more complexity in bosses. That's what I want. So these... Boss, like as you saw, we have no tank. Boss did basically nothing at all. We just we just ignored the boss entirely as we had five turns of setting up while the boss just sat there playing playing you know whatever with himself. Um, but he he didn't do anything. The boss did literally nothing per turn. That's what I don't like for the bosses. I want to be 
having bosses, complicated AI, interesting AI like Mortarum, Kairos, Thranator, etc. Now, I do think it should be bulkier. I think it should have been tuned where you have to have Zyrus and Lastwell. That that would have been just boring, you know, to make it that bulky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, I agree. It they can't. I mean, I guess I can't say they can't. I, I would hope that they wouldn't, and we know they will, um, tune it specifically so that you have to have an entire new meta of units, of which there are currently, let's say, two and a half. Um, but if they had tuned it to be like pretty well clearable with just Avalanche's Tifa, even that would have been nice. But here we are with you know Chow and Ong could have done it by themselves mm-hmm. and done enough damage to get it done. And then... You basically just build a fluff team around it as long as you hit your EX levels to get where you needed to go um, and could fill your, your focus gauge fast enough. Um, you know, I, I just... We're too new into this meta that I guess we can't be surprised that they didn't tune for it, but I just... I It kind of feels like damned if you do, damned if you... I mean... If it's the only content we have, then the unspoken thing is we are literally pulling units for Clash of Wills clears. Since we have literally nothing else to do, that's the point. So, I mean, if you did pull Lastwell and Zyrus like I did, which, again, I literally only did because I wanted Ong to have a supporting cast, then, yeah, I mean, this is what I probably should have been able to do with this clash of wills it just it feels this all just feels so pointless mm-hmm. like i'd have rather them forced me to use three and four star base units than given me nb plus you know like i i don't know so many what ifs oh i know i know all right so real quickly let's go ahead and show the gear for like the two other people on the server that could pull this clear off <laughs> yeah yeah right this is not an attainable clear just for what it's worth <laughs> Uh, Alright, so just briefly, if you can, just go through all three tab slots, equipment, ability, and card for each of the units. Um, Melissa is using, and you'll notice the theme here, a lot of morale gain. Um, draconic power, dual wielding, stuff like that, uh, treasured ring, all that kind of fun stuff. Then for Zyrus, he's using Celestite Rod, which actually pretty heavily nerfed his damage, because he's not using a good rod at all, not using his TMR, not using the Dark Visions Rod. Um, but e- even with that, still, 27,500 unbuffed magic is kind of impressive. Uh, we were earlier playing around, and we got into 29,000 unbuffed with, like, the best possible gear. Um, just for showing off, you know. Uh, but there you go, he's got all the best. Chow is using, uh, you know, typical stuff, just damage. He gears for this relatively easily. I think he had maxed on everything except Aqua Killer, so we focus on Aqua Killer. Gears. He gears for this easily if you have five copies of Zyrus's STMR. <laughs> Again, understandably, not exactly the most fun thing, but when you overcap with this much damage differential, like, you don't need them. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then there's Aang. Uh, same thing, just, you know, killers, etc. We gave him the, the Rict card. Then we've got... Oh, no, he didn't even have a card. What? What? <laughs> How, how does this happen? I don't know. I don't think we ever talked about giving him one. Oh, I, dear. I, just, I just figured he had, like, a generic whatever card equipped. Oh, my no, God. No, well, he did. He had Noctis's card, and then we gave it to Laswell, so. Oh, that's right, so, and we never put anything back on him. Oh, my nope, God. Nope, sure didn't. So we're missing, like, a billion Wait. damage. Yeah, oh, whatever. Sad Here, let's. Let's, let's do one for fun real quick. Let's... I swear the same thing happened last time we did a stream video. Like, we've all of yeah. a sudden found someone was missing a piece. Yeah, when Prompto didn't have uh, a Four... preemptive LB boost. That was 4,000 wow, attack that... power. Sure was. That, that's more than a billion. That's like two and a half billion. Yeah, sure is. Well, Damn. there we go. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> it's, error. it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and then last, well... Um, Barry even crafted the high Stellar Sight Pen because it gives morale per turn. We were, like, desperate for morale per turn with this this party. Uh, but it, it, gives, it gives a modifier buff, so it did something. Uh, and we had to give him yeah. needles as well for the uh, the turn one attack. Because no one, no one on the party did Mirage. I can't oh, believe we, we, we had no card. I'm still, like, just... Wow. I absolutely can believe that. <laughs> 
It's this. Oh man, that's terrible. All right, well. Yeah, because cool. because he because he he was the last person geared in the party, and we we're like we just forgot to go to the card. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Is this your wolf clash and wolf taglets? Let's see how fun we can make it. He, he does, does right? He does. So let's go. Let's go give him an actual card real quick, instead of just a little free, a little free thing. Nobody uh, well, look I, at all my dragon. Uh, there card. you go. That's the one. Twenty-four-three. Jeez, I can't, I can't believe we could have had a thirty-four billion. Oh, we probably could have. Well, there you go, kids. Make sure your units are geared. <laughs> Make sure yeah. if you're gonna have units that you actually equip them to do stuff. Mm-hmm. Important but, lessons. All right. Thanks again, Barry, for joining and have a little bit of fun with this. Yeah, man, of course. All right. See you guys next time.